What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your app downloads and, more importantly, your revenue. And welcome to another Friday YouTube live stream where we're going to talk about this particular stream. How do you market as an indie developer? And I've got a friend of mine who's built a successful app business who's relying solely on organic downloads. So we're going to figure out how to build an app, how to really drive downloads through ASO, and what he some of the A-B tests because he's always A-B testing. And we also take a look at your app. So if you want us to take a look at your app, review it, give you some critical feedback, go fill out that form at masters.com slash, I need a producer, audit. There it is. But without further ado, let me introduce my friend. Go check out his apps. It is linked up into the YouTube description. Some of the popular apps are going to be Crossword Star, the three minute mindfulness. So yeah. all that is linked up, but Rich, welcome back, my friend. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Rich, I did try to find some British dad jokes because you're out uh -huh. in the UK, but uh -huh. they're really not that good. So I'm going to try to really? stay away from them. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I think you have Rich, the best jokes though. <laughs> Let, let's start off with this, man. I know this is a question that I got from somebody in the audience, and I think most people in the audience already have an app idea. So I try to I try to stay away from like, hey, what app idea should you pursue? Because everybody has their own app ideas. But as you start making apps, I know you started out with a lot of games. How did you come up with ideas for your apps? Yeah, um, that's quite a big question for for the Crossword Star app. It was. It was basically looking at the market and seeing that there wasn't, at the time, there wasn't really a good crossword app out there. I didn't like the experience of them. I thought I could do a much better job. So I just, I started coding and it just kind of snowballed from there, really. Um, and in terms of like trying to find ideas, I was, it's, it's me trying to find things that are useful now, really. Um, is it, kind of more long term or is it like more of a fad is it just a trend and i want to kind of make something bigger from my app ideas now um yeah, i don't know if that helps no that does and are you looking at categories that you feel like and this is me like kind of projecting on you rich but i'm looking at yeah. categories that i'm like hmm, what's an app idea that people would routinely use rather than just be like you know like mm. a throwaway app you use it for a little bit and throw it away yeah, the way I think about it now more is, um, I don't, I don't think about categories and things so much anymore. Um, so I have, I was talking to a friend a while ago, and he owns a construction business, and he was, I think it's construction, it might be something else, but he was saying how he was looking for an app for, that does timesheets, and he couldn't find a, mm. a good one. So I wish I followed him up on this, but I think that kind of going down that route and making an app that someone kind of asks you for that they need or finding some problem in the market is probably better than thinking of it in terms of categories and what people are going to use on a daily basis and things and just kind of going out there finding out what people want to use and creating something for that that's kind of where my mind is now on creating apps all right i want to say it's a hi a few people while they're in the comments saying yeah. hi so make sure Give him a shout out. Andy, how's it going? Romaine, how's it good? Oh, how's hey, it going? Romaine. Yeah. Adrian, how's it going? Celtic Whispers out in Ireland. Rudy, he's on vacation. Rudy, what are you doing on vacation <laughs> and hopping in? So it's good to see you, millionaire. Hey, Stephen Rich, how y'all doing? And then Fredo says, I just created my first mobile game combining NFT, combining and NFT called Go Emoji Go, The Maze. I use Google ads to market as well at press release created. Now I'm searching for influence as well. Congrats, Fredo. Did you watch it? See, if you, when you say hi to everybody, they say, start hi, saying hi back. Leo, <laughs> what's happening? We're going to take a look at your app. Joe, good to see you week in, week out. And then we got Kiko, that calm. All right, Kiko. All right, Rich, you know, one of the things that somebody brought up to me was like, you know, we've shared in the past, and I know you know the strategy. Take a look at App Annie. Take a look at the top grossing charts, and then create. You know, it's just to see if there's a market for this. But beyond that, like, is there much more to it? Like, how do you find? Because one of the the videos I'm gonna already recreate created, but it's a scanner app, right? Like, and I mm -hmm. wanted to find a scanner app that just launched. And there's like 
25, 30 scanner apps in the top mm-hmm. 100 business top growth scene. So how do you decide, should I create a scanner app versus should I try to find like what you said with the timesheets, an yeah. app that maybe not a lot of people are thinking about? How do you decide between the two? Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do an app that's been done 30 times, to be honest. Um, I just don't see the point. There's just so many good apps now in the app store that cover most bases. So I think you've just, you've got to look at it from kind of a user perspective rather than looking at the top charts and seeing what's doing well and kind of mimicking those apps. If, if I was going to do more apps now, it would, it would kind of expand from the crossword app. So maybe like Sudoku's or uh, word searches, and it would kind of grow from from that because I know that's kind of what my users are interested in. Yeah, I like that idea too. All right, let me talk talk to this with as well. From an app marketing perspective, I know you've solely focused a lot of it on ASO. You told me you haven't done any paid marketing. What is the marketing look like <laughs> upon launch, and then like subsequently afterwards? And yeah. Um, for the for launch, it's mainly, I haven't really done any marketing on launch. It's not paid anyway. It's all, whenever I launch an app, the first couple of months are always just like collecting data and figuring out if it's working and if it, people are using it in the, in the way that I expect them to be using it, which often isn't the case. And you have to go back and change things. Um, in terms of like optimization and the marketing side, it would be testing different screenshots, testing different app names, testing different icons. And yeah, that's that's where I'd be putting my effort in the beginning. Because I, I, I don't have the budget here to be expending initially on those things. Maybe a little bit just to see how it's like performing, how the screenshots are doing, and you can test that. But any kind of big promotion in the beginning isn't isn't going to work for me here. Not so you're anyway. just solely reliant, hoping that you've done enough ASO that you're starting to get down, some downloads. But beyond that, it's just testing different app names, trying out different keyword combinations, just really trying right. to, re- that's it, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Have you found any success from a, I know one of the case studies that we had early on, thanks to you, was an app icon thing. So if you had to mm-hmm. break it yeah. down, what's, you know, where do you, where would you start if you had to break down, hey, from a tactical perspective, keywords, then screenshots, then app icon, you know, mix and match the two. But it's, it's got much harder um, as time's gone on with the keywords and ranking different keywords and finding different, yeah, that are empty. Um, so I think they've still got to be strong, got to have good keywords, but I don't know how I'd rank it in terms of app icon title. And screenshots. I don't know what's more important, but they're all really important. <laughs> they're maybe all pretty much we, must have. Do you have a... start with the crossword star app and how you yeah. gone about like that first few? I know you know I was part of that journey too, and you told me about a lot of the tests that you ran from a keyword perspective. But how did you go about marketing that? Because you had this mindfulness app that mm-hmm, was doing mm-hmm. pretty well, and so to switch it over to crossword. You know, it doesn't seem like there's a good fit. Whereas, yeah, I mean, I mean the the mindfulness that wasn't doing great, and it kind of reached the point where I didn't know what else to do with it. So I was kind of at a time where I was looking for other opportunities, and I I saw that crosswords at that time the apps weren't really great for crosswords. So I thought I'd give that one a go, and I, it looked like what? gone. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and it looked like those apps were making good money as well, so I thought I'd give it a go. So was it just testing keywords? Because crossword, you know, I know the keyword difficulty on that is pretty competitive. Was it just testing yeah. a lot of keywords, or what was it? What were you doing? I was doing everything. I was testing screenshots, keywords, the icon. Um, the icon's kind of hard for me to test, I think, and I've I don't really yeah. test that so much anymore because I kind of want to keep a bit consistent um but yeah title and screenshots for sure um i did do a lot of keyword things but that's i'm not doing so much of that anymore do you remember the first big win that you got um not i don't actually it was i just remember it kind of it started off with like 20 downloads or something a day and then it and then i changed something and it would 
stay the same and then I change something else and it would maybe go down and then I change something else and then it would go up and it just kind of kept like going like this. Um, I don't remember any okay. specific wins. And I, I just changed the screenshots the other day as well. They nice. seem to be performing well. And oh, so what I do is I test, I test my screenshots in the UK first and see how that works. And then I move it into the US because the US is a much bigger market for me. Nice. I like it. Yeah, I know one of the things that you always do is just test. So it seems like yeah. that. And I hear we'll get to some of these questions on this. So Joe asked, and I don't know. Question Is there a Google Play equivalent of the English, US, Spanish, Mexico trick in the App Store? Just for you guys' reference, for those who don't know, the US App Store indexes the Spanish Mexico localization. So if you put English in that localization, then you're able to double the amount of keywords. So you can have a whole different app title, subtitle, and so forth. Rich, do you know of anything equivalent on the Google Play side? <laughs> I don't use Google Play, so I can't answer that one. Oh. Well, I can. So Joe, I have tested this. There's a, I think there's a US, there's a Spanish English one. I have tested it. I haven't seen that big of an impact like we have on the App Store. So unfortunately, no, I haven't seen that. The okay, we got Leo. How much do you rely on App Store keywords? That's quite a lot because people can't find your app without them, but it's it's hard to get them ranking in the first place. So you rely a lot, but yeah. Yeah, and it Leo, I would be rotating, testing a lot of different the the keywords is a lot, like the title, the subtitle, all that stuff. And I think Romaine said this, you're gonna have to look for keywords with less traffic and maybe less competition just to get yeah. it going if you have no paid marketing channel at all. All right, we don't well, we don't rank well for any we've put on our app. So we're gonna take a look at that yeah. app. So we'll, we'll see. Where do we go to get more organic traffic? All right, we'll take a look. And then I think we'll give you better answers. Romaine says, it'll be easier to rank higher. Yep. In my opinion, app marketing 2020 is all about creating a community outside the app store, i.e. on social media. What do you think, Rich, you agree? I think it's interesting. I think places like Discord are particularly interesting, like the, the groups for like different communities. Yeah, yeah. It, it is interesting. It's an outlet, right? Like we had Chris, who it was, he built his app based on a Reddit community and he helps people quit smoking weed. And it was, you know, he's like, hey, there's, smoking quit smoking cigarettes there's apps like that but there's nothing for weed and so he went to the reddit community and built he was really engaging with that community and then built an app and now it's doing pretty decently all right how long do you wait to track and measure things when you change parameters that's a great question rich yeah um usually <laughs> usually you can tell right away if it's working or not yeah <laughs> So if it's, if it's kind of a little bit better than I'd be wary, I think, but if it's definitely, if it's kind of the same, then yeah, it's, I, um, yeah, I'm kind of looking for bigger wins than just trying to increase it by like 5% or something. Yeah, you're looking it's for like not really worth it. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe not double, but like a significant thing, like not one or 2%. I don't, I can't test for that really. It's not, yeah. Okay, we got Adrian says, hi, Rich. How did the Apple Watch version work out for your mindfulness app? I haven't tried any Apple Watch apps yet. It actually Just so works you know, out. Celtic Apple. Whispers, Adrian has a, a mindfulness type of app based yeah. on some fantasy stuff. Okay, you know about it. All cool. right, go. go for it, Rich. Yeah, I think it actually worked out really well. I didn't, I didn't really want to make one, but people asked me for it and they liked it. And I think that I get, a few downloads from the from the uh from the watch app store i think that's right yeah um yeah it's good people like it surprisingly um i don't use the apple watch or anything but my users like it so yeah it worked out quite well okay all right rich um, rich i got it you said you kind of hit on this with your mindfulness app but how do you know when to actually give up on an app idea you have the superpower of being able to design and then code. Mm -hmm. But then when you get it out in the app store and you're not seeing any type of traction, how do you know you're like, hey, let's move on to a crossword app? Uh, 
I don't know, really. It's, I think it's something that you just know, kind of. You just kind of feel it sometimes. Um, in the beginning, I would be jumping from kind of app to app. I just make one, launch it, make another one, launch it. And it was never really getting anywhere. So I, I kind of wanted to go deeper on the apps. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the way I'm looking at things at the moment is if there's an opportunity that is like way better than the crossword or mindfulness app, then I'm going to go and try that. But if it's kind of a similar or maybe not so good, then I just stick with the crossword app. Here's my idea, Rich, is, you know, I think when it, back to that first three months when you launch an app, you got to be really focused. And we're going to take a look at some of these studies in a little bit, too. If it's a subscription based app like your mindfulness and your crossword mm -hmm. puzzle, you got to look at conversions, right? You mm -hmm. got to figure out ways to down, you know, test all these keywords, drive some downloads. There's some campaigns that I've shared in the past. that will help you drive thousands of downloads. And you really have to be testing that conversion on subscription right like, that's right. it like you got to really figure that part out because i think revenue is key and unless it's like a game or something else where retention is key i feel like with subscription-based apps you just have to focus on the conversion and that's the number one metric besides downloads obviously that yeah. you should be focusing on what are your thoughts on this it's just an idea yeah. i don't have data to back this up um i mean for sure if you've got a subscription well if you've got any kind of app you need to be focused on the conversions um that's how we get paid at the end of the day so right. Yeah. And, and so. yeah, so I mean, before I'd be just releasing an app and then kind of letting it do what it does and then release another one, maybe make a couple of updates. But with the mindfulness and crossword ones, I just kind of kept going and kept trying to figure out like how to crack the app store, I guess. Yeah. And I think yeah. if you've done your market research and you know there's a market for it, there's other apps that are making money from it you know it should be converting then it's mm. just like a matter of testing right like i wouldn't give up yeah. on it too easy like this sleep sounds app that i have out i don't want to give up on it i still think there's a there's some legs into it and while you know i like just like you have changed a bunch of different keywords yeah. i saw the numbers i got the app store connect weekly analytics numbers I'm like oh this is decent mm. there's some sales coming in and so <laughs> it is really paying attention to the sales if you're not getting paid then you have a huge problem on your hands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right Kiko says, how much time do you have to wait to see if a keyword is good or not? I don't know. Usually, I don't know is the honest answer. I, I think it's, I heard somewhere that you have to wait like a month or something for them to fully index and everything. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Usually you can tell quite soon if it's going to yeah. be doing well. Usually that is the case. Usually you can tell right away. And obviously there's some campaigns that I think you can run to help those keyword rankings, but usually you can tell right away if it's good or not. Like, and I've been yeah. trying to, especially if you're relying on ASO, I've been really trying to find keywords. I've shifted my strategy a bit to, f to really go after lower competition keywords just okay. to get some legs and then start moving towards the higher competition keywords once the downloads start coming in. So, can, yeah. Can you do anything with search ads for that? Because mm -hmm. um, can you like figure out conversion rates on different keywords and that would point you in the right direction maybe yeah that's a perfect idea this is what we did one of our clients he in the past i came up with some keywords that were a little bit funky for his app <laughs> and he was like i'm not sure about these but i was like there's high traffic low competition for these keywords and they're sort of related they're not like super far off right and yeah. he was like okay let me run some search ads on these keywords and he saw them really convert high and so we started using them on aso so that's a great strategy and i do think that for me rich my gut feeling is that you do need a little bit of budget i mean you can mm. test all the I, aso you want and that's going to get you to a certain point but i feel like you do need a little bit of marking budget these days to get it going and then once you've got it to yeah. a stable area and i changed my mind a little bit based off our talking to Marco, you know, our mutual mm -hmm. friend mm -hmm. where he, you know, I didn't know he poured in that much money, like $10,000 into his, yeah. you know, calculator app. And I was like, Oh wow. Like, and then once you hit a certain level, mm -hmm. then you can sort of live off of that. But then if I feel like, you know, you can only get to stage one just organically. And then mm -hmm. if you put some paid marketing and you really tweak the conversions, you can get to stage 
three or four, but stage one and two are going to be really limited. That's just my thoughts. I, yeah. Again, this is just an opinion, not not data supported. No, I, I completely agree with you. Like, I mean, I did my apps. I started them, I guess, four years ago. But the crossword one is almost four years old, so it's kind of different now. And I think you do need a paid budget. I think you've always really needed a paid budget if you want to do big things anyway. Yeah. Um, but why? <laughs> I agree. I agree. But the so yeah, sorry. and the the I'd I'd like to do it, but my conversions aren't there, you know. And this is something that you're helping with me with yeah. now. So hopefully we can get them kind of there because I I wasn't really happy to be spending a dollar and getting fifty cents back. So yeah, yeah. I, I think we're and we'll we'll have you back on. We, Rich and I are working on a few things together to hopefully improve those conversions for him. So we'll share some details if you're open to it rich well yeah of course all right so let's see we're gonna we're getting a lot of other questions so i like this <laughs> facial asks are quora and pinterest worth it for app marketing what do you think rich? i've i've heard that it's good i've never done it i keep seeing like when i'm on quora the duck duck go promoted thing i don't know if you've seen that yeah yeah i think that's amazing so i think for anything like that would be Right. Yeah. So here's what I feel like, right? The um, there was this, I think it was DoorDash or Grubhub, probably Grubhub actually, but they did this like blog post on how they had ads on porn sites. And then it was like oh. sort of made sense for them, right? Like, hey, if you're hungry, and then they saw some really great returns on it. And so what I face what I would say, the way I would answer this question is it depends on the app. If your app is more business oriented, then maybe Coro is a great platform. If your app is more like fitness or fashion, food related, Pinterest will probably be a great platform. And so it really is app dependent. So if you wanna put your app in there, we can tell you, we can give you a definitive answer, but you wanna be clever with it too. So if other apps are already doing it, you wanna find the different channels, just like Grubhub and did with you know the different porn sites out there. So And, and you wanna find out where your users are, don't you? Yeah. Like yeah. And then create a blog post out of it. And yeah. then it becomes clickbaity. And then people think about that <laughs> all the time. That thing was everywhere. <laughs> all right. Leo says, do you both code your app? How did you learn? And how hard is it to learn Swift UI without a background in coding? All right, I'm gonna let you answer this one. Yeah. So Steve doesn't do any coding. I used to rich. I used really? to. I didn't know that. <laughs> what did you use to code? Well, I can do like JavaScript and Lua. Wow. So I did minor in computer science. And so I can do, I used, wow. I can do PHP and I can do some coding. I can read I it. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I mean, how long have we known each other and you just figure this out? Anyways, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I specifically, I don't know about Swift UI. I haven't used that yet. Um, I started off just buying the templates for apps and then I, like publish them and then I go in and tweak them how I wanted to, how I wanted them to look and yeah it's basically out of necessity that I learned how to program um, I just kind of built it up over a couple of years and then I was kind of good I guess at programming <laughs> yeah that's exactly it was, yeah Sorry, go yeah it was just kind of learning on the job I guess <laughs> how to program yeah. That's exactly what I did, Rich. I and that's what I would recommend, Leo. That's what I do recommend, but that's just me without that's more of a marketer. But essentially, I was able to find templates. So I use Lua. I use this thing called Corona back in the day mm -hmm. where it was based off of Lua. I tried to learn Objective C and I couldn't figure that out, but I mm -hmm. could learn I did know Lua. So we just found I found one of the free templates and then I just modified it to my needs. And that's the best mm -hmm. way to teach yourself because the base of the app is already done. And then if you know a little bit, you can sort yeah. of maneuver and manipulate the code. I think for how hard is it to learn Swift UI? I don't know how, how hard to learn Swift UI, but to learn Swift, it's one of the nicer programming languages, to be honest. So I, I wouldn't think it'd be too hard to pick that up. Um, I don't know what kind of background you've got, if it's technical or something else. But. Um, how dare you? Romaine. Let's face it. Steve doesn't code. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I know. I don't. Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> I used to. Start, Joe says, start with something small, basic. Try recreating basic apps, yeah. like stopwatches and then to-do lists and work your way up from there. Completely. That's great. Yeah. All right. Do-do-do-do-do. says, 
Good night, everyone. I got to go to dinner. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> good. Go eat. <laughs> All right. We've got, oh, man, Olafiov. Olafiov. Think of, what do you think, Rich? Did I do a good enough job? We got a lot of questions. This is crazy. All right. <laughs> How much do you think is a good start in terms of marketing budget? Guess about? it depends on your app, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And Olaf, you have to Yeah, I'm going to create a video about this because this is a question I get a lot from clients and everybody in the audience too. And I always think it's like, what can you afford first? Okay, that's my number one. What can you afford? And then number two, I think anywhere from a thousand to five thousand is enough to start testing different things. Because you know, just like Rich, I believe in this mentality of grow, iterate grow, iterate, and then the marketing plan that this video is going to contain, I put together for a lot of our clients includes that. Like what are the three primary marketing channels that I would be focused on that is going to be Apple search ads, Google ads, and then Facebook ads, dependent on your app and your budget, but anywhere from a thousand to 5,000 is enough for you to, you want those initial first 1000 downloads just to see the numbers of your conversion of your retention. If it's a subscription based app, then I'm really focused on conversions and that's a primary thing. Right. And then conversions, can, we can break that down into how many people sign up, download, and then sign up for your app. If that is a required element. And then of those signups, how many end up paying or trucks activating a conversion. And then eventually how many people are staying on to that conversion, that trial as well. And we're going to take a look at some of those numbers, but that's how I would say it. Anything you want to add on to that, Rich? No, as long as you can get, as long as you can spend money to get the, the dates you need for that. And that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a first off. Oh, sh I'm always forgetting this bell. Okay. Anyways, let's take a look at Leo's app. That's going to be the first app that we have but before we do. I love to tell a dad joke. And then Rich came prepared. <laughs> Unlike anybody I've ever seen, he came prepared, yo. Rich, you're the guest. So do you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, you go first. You go okay, first. I can go first. Or Okay. The So leave in the comments if it's Rich or Steve. I really need your guys' help. We answered a lot of questions. So please, as a pay it back to me, just vote. Rich and I, we, we neither of us drink, so we're gonna play for a smoothie or something else. <laughs> oh, or boba. That sounds great. We could do boba, right? Like, why don't we do yeah. boba? <laughs> Whoever wins will owe boba to the other person. Rich, I got one for you. Why was the man's birthday party so stinky? I don't know. Why was it? Because he was turning farty. That's terrible. <laughs> Where's my bell? Where's my bell? All right, that's it. <laughs> All right, Rich, what's yours? So, well, firstly, my Show my, the book. my brother's girlfriend gave my dad a book for his birthday this year because he's like oh the worst for dad jokes, right? So the book is the very embarrassing book of dad jokes. There you go. Yeah, there's a plug for the book. So there you go. So here we go. Why was the timid defender called Cinderella? Why was the what defender? The timid defender. Oh, why was the timid defender called Cinderella? No clue. Because he kept running away from the ball. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Let us know who won. Put an S if you thought I won that round. Put an R if you like Rich's joke. We've got, we've got more of these, right? We got more of them. Okay. We'll do good, it before good. you chat about it. All right. We got <laughs> Leo's app right here. It is called Lock Card. I love the visuals, notifications to mm -hmm. level up your vocabulary. Pretty cool idea, right, Rich? I yeah. was like, hmm, interesting. So it's sort of like I, I did a meditation app, and then you get like these push notifications for motivations. But this is push notifications to learn new words. So I love it. I love that idea. Okay. Let's take a look at your app store. Leo was talking about a lot of his keywords not really taking place. So, Leo, like, I think what you have to do is English diction. Okay, so here's the problem, right? And you're utilizing, unless English dictionary is a good keyword that has, you know, decent traffic, low competition, you might be wasting it here. I think what you want to go after is like new, learn new keywords or learn vocab. Something around vocabulary would be interesting. And then search once, remember forever. Great branding crappy from an ASO perspective. So you want to have vocab, vocabulary, 
sentences, new words, SAT, those might be the real keywords that you want to go after versus search once, remember forever. So that's your main problem here. Rich, you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, I, I think that it's great visually, by the way. Yeah. I think you've done a really good job with that, especially the website as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of the subtitle and the app title, um, yeah, you're going to have to look at the data. I don't know what it is. Right. And I'll pull this real quick for you, Leo, since you're here in the comments. And that's why if your app, we let you guys know, fill out that form at masters.com slash audit. If you want feedback like this, and we'll let you know the Monday before the Friday that we will be auditing your app. And so join us. And when you join us, I'm going to give you a little bit extra love. So let's take a look at your app real quick, Leo, because visually it looks really good, but I'll give you some keywords that you're probably missing out on what card. So I'm in app follow off at follow.io. What I really like about app follow is sort of like this tool, this Apple search ads. And I do, I like to do keyword research like this. So you, here's the big problem that I'm seeing rich when Apple is saying very limited keywords, you have a problem, right? Leo. So it's, you have a huge problem from an ASO perspective, go through my core, the free series I have ASO 2021 where I have it, but let's say vocabulary would be the main keyword. And I want to see which app show up for this vocabulary builder, vocabulary games, vocabulary, daily words. These all SAT vocabulary, if that's the niche you want to get hit on, GRE vocabulary. So like English vocabulary, these are all keywords that you want to have and you're missing. So I'm going to click on this first app real quick because it seems to be doing what you do. And then now you can see all the keywords that you should theoretically start thinking about. And then I just want to look vocabulary, vocabulary builder has 42 search scores, whereas English what do you have dictionary not even showing up, but hope it doesn't have that much traffic as vocabulary, vocabulary builder. That's the primary keywords I would be going after. Do you know if it's a new app and that's why the keywords haven't started coming up yet? Uh, it, let's take a look. I was trying to find out how new it is. March, have... March, 2021. So fairly new. Okay. Yeah. It should, they should be coming up by now though. Surely. Leo says, I did not think about it that way. And then honestly, I had no little about apps or optimization. No problem, Leo. That's so why we're here for. Have you filled out the keyword field first as well? Like, is that yeah. full? I mean, I hope so. You want to use So Leo, if you're brand new to this, there's a keyword field in App Store Connect and you can go up to hundred characters and I sure hope you're using all mm -hmm. 100 characters. So yeah, if you got a little bit of budget, check out ASO masters. We'll, we'll help you out with the ASO side of things within a couple of months. All right, let's take a look at his app. All right, Rich, because he wants core usage and onboarding. So here, I hate this first screen. <laughs> you can be the nice guy. I'll be the Sam and Cal. Yeah, but Leo, you're, it's learn new words, learn new yeah. vocabulary or build your vocabulary. What is this fast search crap? Like, I don't care. I want to learn new keywords. So, or new words, right? Like. I want to ace the AS, SAT. Like, there's reasons why I want your app. Fast search. Are you a Google? What the hell does this mean? Anyways, I hate this first screen. Yeah, I downloaded Again, I the it. app last yesterday to check it out. And I was swiping through the screen and I realized I don't know what this app is about. Yeah. you, Leo, you think people remember you. People don't give a crap about you. People don't give a crap about me. You have to tell them exactly what it is. So I have a stupid intro, the same stupid intro every single time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Stimulate your brain. I like this. That's not bad. Long press to interact. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Oh, okay. Allow. All right. I'll allow it. It's kind of weird that the notifications came up a little bit before. I thought it was done well, though. But I got the notification there. prompt like right here, where I think I should have probably got it like right here. Ah, uh, yeah, it kind of got stuck for me as well. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it should have gone to the next page. So um, one of the things I feel like too, and Murphy, past podcast guest, shared this. I feel like this is a long, too many screens saying the same gibberish. So I would test probably 
I feel like three is good. Three to four, three to five, really, if you want to go five. This just feels like too long of a notifications. It's like, what do I want? I want to learn new keywords. I want to be notified for the new keywords. And then this is pretty cool, right? Like, I don't know what this means, what this medium is meaning. But anyways. I think it's like a medium vocabulary or something. Okay, so like... Yeah, see, this is the problem with this. I'm expecting a word of the day type of thing because of the push notifications mm -hmm. and you're showing me a Google type of search. I'm expecting like a big, here's an SAT word. Like I know you have it here, these first four, but I'm expecting those right off the bat. And if you look at like, do I have a motivation? If you look at this motivation app that I've covered in the past, this is what I'm expecting. Maybe because, you know, I know this app, but you kind of laid it out with the screenshots that I get notified every time and I get to learn these new keywords. So you have to think about what your users really are coming in for and think about like giving that because I don't want to search. I want to learn new key, new words, right? Not like search, I'm not here for a dictionary. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking when I downloaded it as well. I like, cause I don't even know what words I want to search for. I just want to yeah, learn a new vocabulary. So I think maybe even like a swiping um uh yeah just a swiping vocabulary so you can just keep learning new words it looks like there's no search. monetization in the app rich were you able to find any um no i don't think i could leo let me know app. if there's monetization within the app i can look at your app I store I don't think there is because I can't see any in-app purchases on the App Store page. Yeah, I mean, when I'm thinking about monetization, so just so you know, Leo, because you're brand, it seems like you're brand new to this. During that welcome flow, your screens, you want to put that pricing page on that welcome flow when you do put monetization. But based off of my limited keyword research that I just did for you as well, you know, SAT vocabulary when we're looking at vocabulary, GRE vocabulary, those could easily be packs if you subscribe, right? Like, or just packs in general. So like SAT vocabulary, buy this pack, GRE vocabulary, buy this pack, vocabulary for kids, buy this pack, right? So when you think about monetization, this is already clearly telling you what types of things that people are searching for. And that could easily become your monetization as well. Yeah, no monetization yet, he says. All right. I and think this is a, I think it's a great attempt at a first app. Yeah. It looks good. It's I think, really what, and I hope this goes out to all the first time app developers start with monetization right off the bat. That's just my feeling on it again, no data, but I just feel like if you don't, if you don't have monetization, what are you truly testing anyways that you can build an app? Kudos. That's cool. But this is already a pretty cool app. And so if you're not testing monetization, like mm -hmm. what are you really, really learning from this besides, unless you're trying to land a new job, right? And then you're like, Hey, check out my app. It looks cool. If that, is, but if you're trying to make a business out of this, have monetization from the very, very onset. From the well, launch. Let's, let's go a step further. Uh, uh, yeah, let's go a step further. And yeah, like, what would you? How do you monetize this? Would you put it as subscri subscriptions like the motivation app? Yes, I would totally yeah. put this as a subscription based app. I'm gonna feel like this is probably high school ish type of kids, right? Like this is just my mindset with SAT GRE. So I would say anywhere from like 16 to mid twenties, mm -hmm. right? And so I would probably price this at 20 to $30. And I talked about pricing with somebody yesterday. I would probably start lower. Like 20 is the le lowest I would go for a yearly subscription. I would start lower because I can always go higher. But if I start lower, too low is a negative impact, right? But 20 seems like the, the minimum and see how well it converts. And if it's converting, I can always test to go higher, but if I go higher, I can't go down. And Rich, I got this question. If I buy a $20 in-app purchase and then you as a develop, I'm the user. So Rich, you increase your price to yeah. 30. I'm already on the 20. Do I always renew at 20 or do I renew yeah, at 30? It's, it's up to the, the developer. So you can increase the price and you can keep people at the price that they paid or you can request that people um, move up to that new level, but then they're automatically moved up to that level. From a development standpoint, how do you do that? You, that uh, it's just an app store connect setting. Yeah, you don't, you, have, you don't have to code anything. Oh, so when you change the price within app store connect, 
the App Store Connect would just ask you, hey, do you want to keep users on the old price? Yep. Okay. Yep. They handle it cool. all for you. Great. That's what I thought if, too. And I'm glad you answered it. Because yep. And if you go it. if you go down, then everyone moves down to the lowest level that you set. So even better to not mm -hmm. you know, yeah. start high yeah. and move down, but, right? But there is a way, there is a way around that. And you just create a new subscription group and you show that different subscription. Yeah. Okay. And then Leo says, good point. We're going to release vocab list soon. Awesome. All right. Let's see if we miss any. Rich, you want to see who won this? All right. Let's, I, I got missing some questions. Uh, Joe has some comments. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's start with the, the score. All right, Rich, you ready for this? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Lee, Joe says S, but he did say your, yours is pretty good, too. Ah. Right? And then Thomas S. That's up my game. Celtic. This isn't good, is it? Raymond just felt bad for you, okay? That's 1-0, one zero, <laughs> Rich. 1-0. <laughs> <One zero. laughs> uh, yeah. All right, let's get into some of these questions as well. Er, doo -doo -doo. Celtic had some. Steve, I just went through your three-part ASA video series. Can I ask if it's worth running search ads for a keyword that I rank in the top 10 for? Yeah. Adrian, I think so. You know, like if it's a keyword that it's not so much for ASO purposes, because what I heard from ASO and ASA is that if you're really ranking in the hundreds, well, then having ASA, Apple search ads running, it helps boost it up. But if you're already in the top 10, why not? Because, you know, I've seen other like bigger app developers, like even do on branding where they're just sort of protecting it, but you want to see how well it converts. And if it converts really high for you, and you can get it at a pretty low cost per tap, cost per acquisition, then it, it is still worth doing it. All right. Many companies run it even if they're number one for that keyword as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, you know, Calm and all that stuff, mm. they, they do run it because they're just trying to protect their brand. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not a strong believer in protecting your brand because I feel like if someone's searching for your brand, they they probably want to, so you're probably not gonna lose that many people, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me see if I. Romain says, best way to learn to make your own small app and face your own code <laughs> challenges and Google to find some answers. Following tutorials isn't as effective. Yeah. Make your own first small app. That is the best way to go. Okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me see if I miss anything. Here we go. Some number sequence. Should you, question is, should you use the same keywords for the keyword field and long description for ISO, for iOS? I don't, as far as I'm aware, the key, the description doesn't count towards ASO. I don't know if that's changed or not. Um, your description should, should just be a breakdown of the app and why people should download it and the features and things like that, I think. Yeah, agreed. On iOS, I don't think it matters for the long description. I don't, it, they haven't indexed it, maybe they will, but you have this keyword field, which I feel like is more valuable. I like the keyword field, Rich, I right? like versus Android where you have to put everything in the long description and make it work. For Android, 09RMV. And for Android, should you use the same keyword for subtitle and long description? I would. I like to repeat some of the keywords I'm using, the title, subtitle, and long description. I just like to repeat it. Somebody did tell me it didn't matter if you repeat it in the title and short description. So you might not need to do that. but. For the long description, I do try to repeat some of those keywords that I have in the title and subtitle. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen naturally anyway, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, Leo, everybody loves your app, so good stuff. Mm. Let's see if there's any more comments. It's definitely lengthy, but the illustr. Joe likes it. He doesn't like the length of the text, but he likes the illustration. So you can look at all that stuff, Leo. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's just, how can we live the app? Uh, I don't know what that means, but if you want us to take a look at your app, then you fill out that form. But I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? How can we live the app? Is it how, how do you launch it? Maybe. Maybe. How do you launch I'm, it? I'm not sure. Lavish, if you want to learn how to launch it, the, my main video on YouTube at masters.com slash YouTube talks about like app marketing, five, my, five of my favorite app marketing tips. So check that video out. And then I have one on app marking with zero budget. So check that out as well. All right, Rich, time to redeem yourself. Round two, you ready for it? I don't have a bell, but I'll make it work. You want to go first? Or you want me to gotta, go first? I've got to get a good one. Yeah, you better find a good one. Let's see. 
All right. Okay. How do you turn vegetable soup into golden vegetable soup? soup? How do you turn vegetable soup into golden vegetable soup? Mm. How rich? You add 24 carrots. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I like these puns. See, Rich, the secret is you got to find a fart joke. If you lead with it, uh, you <laughs> always win with that. All right. Let's test the theory. Let's test it. I don't have any more fart jokes, but uh. Rich, my son said, Dad, once I reach 99 pounds, I'll eat one pound of nachos. Then I will be 99% your son and 1% nacho son <laughs> all right guys again look there's a lot on the, a lot at stake you have to leave in the comments s or r all right uh, you got to do it r i mean s s or r okay <laughs> boba's expensive here so you're gonna have to help me out here i don't actually right. know what it is what are you talking about what's that boba what? yeah how dare you? you have a you have a korean fiance and you don't know what boba is <laughs> i'm gonna tell sue to just dump you right now it's just bubble tea you know you know ah, okay bubble. i like bubble tea yeah. <laughs> all right arjun says downloads so here's arjun's app let's take a look at this oh come on people more votes please all right more votes on the joke battle arjun <laughs> here's the app slash buy local services efficiently on your terms. I'm gonna go to the website too. It looks like the app just launched because it only got 50 plus downloads or June. So I'm gonna assume that. Okay. okay. I wasn't sure if it was available everywhere that's why i went to the website but san mateo road i'm assuming you're available in the states okay if Valmont, foster city okay this is the bay area all right rich sorry i'm trying to turn off my phone uh, i'm not sure what the app does you know what the app does um i thought it was just for android so i didn't really have a look well, I have the app, and so let's read through it. Slash enables you to find the most appropriate services you need without requiring you to spend time and effort. Okay. Oh, my gosh. The, I would prove the wording. So it looks like you can find local services, beauty home. There's a lot of these apps that do this. Discover new service deals by local fine business, quality times, purchase offers, and schedule your appointment. So it feels like a Groupon type of thing with scheduling embedded mm -hmm. if I am doing this because you can do massages, spa dates, all that stuff. You can find deals and then book Half Moon Bay. So they're probably in the Bay Area local. For an app like this, like you, you, you have any suggestions or you want me to just kick it off? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't, I was just going to say, is that the whole title or is that a title plus subtitle? Yeah, I think this is like, what i would be this is the whole title and then this okay, is the okay. subtitle right here short description i think it's a great name by the way slash if that's what i think yeah but i'd, I like I'd be slash. breaking that up um so it's slash and then a dash i guess yeah so what i would be doing arjun is local services i'm not sure if that is a keyword that has a lot of traffic or i'm sorry like is relevant to your app could be could be not local services let's see what thumbtack local pros clean so yeah i personally would be going after the services you provide as keywords versus local services so if it's massage you know if it's the bay area then talk about it it looks like you're only available in the bay area so like talk about you know, massage haircut those actually have traffic spa finder is an app that's out there that's pretty similar to what I think what you're trying to do. And so what is the main benefit? I think when you just put local services, that means anything that could be like plumbing. It could be a lot of different things. You want to just hit home on who in the beginning, you want to figure out who is the easiest that's going to say yes to your app and then just hit on those people. And then if I were to market this app, I would be focused on those particular keywords. And then I would just buy some Facebook ads for people in the Bay Area that are looking for this type of service. So it's like, you know, I think a part of your value proposition is the fact that I'm able to find deals 
on your app. And so maybe it's like the Groupon model of just, I think they started out in Chicago, but like running ads in the Bay area and the San Mateo foster city area and being like, Hey, we've got slash, like, you know, we got 50% off local spas booked today and taking them either to this Android app or to your website and getting them to convert that way. And so that's what I would be doing to market this I, app. I wonder if it's, if it's more than just massage. I wonder if it is for all kind of services because on, on one of the screenshots, it says writing coach. Writing so maybe, coach? Yeah, maybe it is just for every kind of service, like locally. We'll take, so, we'll take a look at the app and let's figure this out. Uh, let me grab my Android. Eek. It's a nice idea though. Uh, I feel like it's crowded. It's going to be hard. It's a long journey. Like if you want an app that you will make money quick, then build something else. If you want to build something that you're going to need funding and all that stuff, mm. go ahead and continue with slash is my opinion. Cause it's going to take a long time. You know, there's already Groupon. There's all these other, there's spa finder, yeah. all this stuff already. Yeah. Here, here it says beauty, home care, professional services, health and spa, tutoring services, garment care. Maybe you should just focus on one of them. Yeah, you have to. Ah, my location. I'm showing everybody my location. <laughs> so yeah, I would focus on just one of them. There's just too much going on at once. Let me pick on one of them. All right. Mm, pants him. Okay. Let's get a massage. I'll get a massage. Oh, get a coupon. All right. Interesting. I'll get a massage on Rich. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Oh, wait. Um, uh. <laughs> it's 40 miles away, so that's pretty far. But anyways, let's see what happens. Okay, I guess. Uh, Steve, there you go. Oh, okay. I can buy pretty much six hour massage. I could buy book. So it is interesting. It looks like I can do everything else within this to where this goes into. All right. Stripe looks stripe, right? Whoops. There's a lot of work that's gone into this. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty decent. I mean, that's all I would do. If you're just thinking about downloads for this moment, figure out if it's tutoring, if it's skincare, like what is the main thing that you want to target? And maybe it is all three and you have to find the one that is going to convert the best. So if it's guitar lessons, if it's haircut, maybe there's enough haircuts out there. So if it's guitar lessons, if it's pet care, maybe there's a different niche that you want to go after versus, you know, like hair care and spa It's probably pretty competitive already. I would focus on that. Find the, put a budget on each category and find which one converts the best into paying users and then just run wild with that particular category. But I wouldn't put local services. I would call out the local services that you do provide on these screenshots too. So I'm like, hey, I need this. Do you have this? You answer my question right away in these screenshots. All right. Cool. All right, Rich, we're running out of time here. I really wanted to end at 10. All right. looks like you won the last round, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Good. <laughs> Thank you very and much. And Chuck Whispers, Adrian. Ah, Sanchez. here we go. How dare you. Okay. They get zero organic downloads, have done SEO and everything. Jags Place, any way to get downloads organically at launch without campaigning? Yeah. Keyword research. Right. Anything? I mean, you want to add to that? No, that's what you've done, Rich. So yeah, the answer, answer is yes. <laughs> if you're getting zero downloads and change everything, I think yeah, change the icon, change the name, change the subtitle, change the screenshots, and see what happens. Uh, yes. Yeah. Short answer is yes. And the answer is never mind. So all these after yeah, they're planned. They're planned way far ahead. Come on, Andy. You think I'm just going live with this stuff? Again, we have a long list at masters.com/audit. You want to do that as well. Okay. And if you do want to sit down for an hour with me that, that you can pay for as well through that same link.
All right, let's go last joke, and then we'll hit this Min Ho's app real quick. Overall, UI, UX, so you'd be the perfect guy to talk about this. Rich, uh, you want me to go first? You want to go first? Uh, you go first. I got my next one. Okay. I got the last one for you. This is kind of nerdy, so if hopefully you're a Star Wars fan. But what's a Stormtrooper's favorite store? What's a Stormtrooper's favorite store? The one next to Target. And my son had explained this. It's because they always miss the next one. Uh, the next one. <laughs> and I had to think about it. Too. I was like, That's what do you mean? And then he's like, oh, because they always miss. And I was like, you're a nerd. <laughs> All right. So what fairground ride is always made, made of iron? So what fairground ride is always made of iron? A Ferris wheel. <laughs> All right, I like it. And then Jag's place, your app audit link is broken in the description. Okay, I gotta fix that. But it, it does work at masters.com slash audit. Okay, let's go to the last one. And we can't cover the subscription, so maybe we'll do it in another video. We've got this app and then we'll go straight into, it's a fax app. So you can fax right from your phone, Rich. Oh, faxing. Does anybody fax still? I know. Mean, <laughs> that's what this big old thing is for right here. But let's take a look at the UI because that's what they want anyways. Screenshots look amazing, right? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think they're great. Yeah. Maybe. Scan and fax? I'd, yeah. Maybe the, maybe the woman's more targeted to men than women. <laughs> What is this, a Carl's Jr. ad? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look. <laughs> All right, now, facts go. Here we go. See, Leo, this is what you want to really just hit home. Exactly that first one. Here, this is exactly what we do. Again, just a reminder. Q, there's only three. Send urgent faxes from anywhere. Love it. Quick mobile facts, pay as you go, live status update. Love it even more. Rich, do you think it's better to, uh, I'm gonna create a video about this and we're gonna talk about it next week too. You think it's better to just show this pop-up right away or do you think it's better to like do a double opt-in where you say, hey, uh, you know, notifications are awesome, turn it on and then ask them. I think that in terms of best practices, it's probably best to have a double opt-in but i get way more people opting in just by showing them the alert straight away <laughs> i'm glad you said that because yeah. that's what we're gonna talk about yeah. but yeah that is true that's mo if you just yeah. show up right away most people opt in which is crazy oh man look at that there you go man i left you feedback so the i think the one thing that i'm missing is this like if you want man if you want me to subscribe you know like just show this and we are going to do the new video series where I go like, which test won? So Rich, if you got some tests that you want to share with me, send them over, but definitely show this pricing page during your welcome flow. So after you said, go, you want to show this, I want to go long on this pricing page. Give me the basic is pay as you go, maybe some pricing on there and then unlimited facts, all that stuff. And so that's going to be a future video, man, but look out for that. The longer pricing pages are the way to go. They're going to probably going to convert better. Let's see. So they wanted um, like UI UX improvements, and honestly, I think the UI is fine. I don't yeah, see any I think problem so with too. it. Looks really it's got good. A nice, a nice big button to send the fax. The only thing that maybe I'd do differently was I expected to then kind of attach an image or type something for the fax straight away. It kind of felt weird for me doing the phone number first. Me too. I was going to say the same thing. I'm glad you said it. I was like, you know, I want to fax. I want to scan stuff first and then do phone number. Yeah. Right here, just take a picture. Fax my keyboard. Yeah, sure, why not? Good enough. <laughs> Add cover page. I don't want to. <laughs> five, 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 five. I don't think I've ever sent a fax. Yeah. Well, you're too young. Yeah. <laughs> I 
Oh, just let me save. Look at where the save is. So here's a UI feedback, man. Like mm -hmm. the save is way up top. Preview, I'm like, okay, well, how do I save this? I'm ready. And I was like, okay, it's wait up here. I'd rather just hit save right off the bat. That's the main cause. Yeah, you can just put another button down there as well. With a different color. See, here's where you, I think this is where it goes. Like, hey, you know, you can get 20 credits about this many pages per month or just pay $20 a year and send up, you know, unlimited. Mm -hmm. So you break it down and in the subscription plans on that longer price of page, you have a, a table that says basic versus pro. You can really lay all that out to show the value of $20 a year. Cause let's face it. That's pretty cheap. If you're, if you have to send faxes like my wife does all the time. All right, that's it guys. Who, who won that joke? Come on, put it in the comments below. Who won that <laughs> joke? We don't know. All right. So rich, Anything we miss that you want to make sure we cover? I don't think so. I think we covered a lot. All right. What would you say to an indie developer that is like some of the people, Jack's Place, who's got zero downloads? What, what, what kind of advice would you give? To yeah, if, if you're I mean, about? if you, I guess if you want it enough, then just keep going. If, if you think the app's good enough, and if, if you've got a different idea, then go and do that. Um, I mean... If, if it's worth it, then keep going. But if you're getting zero downloads and yeah, it's not really go and try something else, I think. Yeah, it's, I, I, I don't really know what to say. If it's if it's zero downloads, I think there's there's better ways to spend your time than. I've asked this that. like quit, when you quit on an idea question to a lot of people and the consensus seems to be that just really depends on your gut. So if you feel like yeah. there's you know, there's a friend of mine that I've worked with way back in the day. Dude's still working on his app like five, six years later and mm -hmm. sort of stuck in the middle. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, kudos to you because he's like, no, this is ride or die. And so it really depends on the person and your gut. If your gut says, I'm ready to move on, move on. I don't think there's a right answer. Yeah. And it's something that I struggle with as well because my, my apps aren't making like really good amounts of money, but it's, it's kind of just enough for me to do this. Um, yeah, I'm sure I could make loads more at a job, but yes, it's it's hard Richard to know. Understand when, uh, himself. He's doing pretty well, but we're we're gonna try to do better too. But you, <laughs> I think you're doing pretty well, man. Thank you. All right, cool. We got one vote, so is it an asterisk win? Asterisk. Ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll introduce you to Boba. <laughs> <laughs> if it's Boba Tea, I've had Boba Tea loads in Korea. <laughs> I love the stories. You're like, you know, I tried to order a Coke in the U.S. and people had no idea what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make you order. We're going to go into a bubble place and you're going to order it for me. All right, okay. Rich, if the audience wants to connect with you in any way, where should we send them? I think LinkedIn. I don't LinkedIn? really have any other kind of uh, presence other than that. Go check out Rich's apps. You know, you'll, you'll find this crossword app. You're going to... It's all linked up as well. If you got any questions for him, go reach out to that LinkedIn. I think that's linked up in the description as well. And Jack's Place says, but what if it's a decent app with zero? Keep working, Jack's Place. Yeah. Reach out to me, fill yeah. out that audit form, or you know, you do the free one, or you can do the paid one. We'll help you out in terms of tips and tricks. But then check out the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. All right. If, if you believe in it, just keep going until you get Keep that. going. Yeah. yeah. It's a gut feel. Let's keep going. So... There's no right answer to when you give up on the idea. Guys, next week, we're going to come back with another indie developer, and we're going to talk all about some of the A-B tests that he's run, the push notification stuff, spoiler alert, and then <laughs> how he's been able to build momentum within this app. And the cool thing that we're going to cover next week is how do you keep your app fresh with new content without having to submit a new build? And so he's going to share some really cool tools to help you do that as well. Rich, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. You're welcome. It's been, it's been fun. <laughs> Thank you all for being here week in, week out. I hope you enjoyed the dad jokes as I did, which is going to do some more studying to really beat me next time. But thank, guys, join us next week, 9 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. in the UK. Right, Rich? It's about mm -hmm. 5 p.m.? Yeah, it's 5 p.m. All right. And then 9.30 p.m. in India. Those seem to be the most popular countries. Until next week, I'll see you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.